Hey everybody, this is Ryan King, and in this Blender tutorial, we're going to be making gunshot VFX using stock footage from ProductionCrate.com. So uh, here's the result that I got. I just filmed myself in my backyard, and I just used uh, one of my friend's airsoft guns, and then I just added uh, this stock footage on top. So this stock footage is really cool. Uh, it has like a flash and then there's like a, a bit of a spark and then some like smoke. So it's really awesome and it makes it a lot more realistic and cool. So if you want to make like a short film or something, this is really awesome. And uh, this is super easy. You can do all of this using the Blender video editor. So you, when you're video editing uh, like a short film or something like this, you can just add it on top of your footage and it's really easy. So here is ProductionCrate.com. And you can get a free account. They do have a paid account, which you can get even more stuff. The free account will allow you to get like uh, five downloads a day. Uh, and the pro content, the paid account, uh, will have, will give you access to even more stuff. So it's really cool. But the free account, you can still get a lot of awesome stuff with that. So uh, I just typed in gunshot here on productioncrate.com and I will leave a link in the video description to productioncrate.com. So I just typed in gunshot right here and you can see there's a bunch of super uh, super cool gunshots and like muzzle flashes. So uh, you just go and film your footage or whatever you want to add the footage or the VFX on top of, and then you can just choose whatever you want. Just get a free account with productioncrate.com if you want, and then you can just download uh, some awesome stock footage. So here I am in Blender and I'm just going to go to the video editor. So I have this video editing tab right here. If you don't have that though, you can click plus and then go to video editing and then uh, video editing right here. So I've set up some defaults. Uh, this is what uh, the video editor looks like on default when you just open up Blender, but uh, I don't really use this right here. Uh, this is just kind of like to access footage and stuff. So I'm just gonna click in this corner and then click and pull out and you'll see there's this arrow. It's kind of hard to see, but then you'll hold, keep your mouse holding down and just drag back and then let go and that'll just remove that. Um, and then everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, so, so a few things I've done actually is, uh, if you go to playback, you can click on AV sync right here. And that way, if the video sequencer lags a bit, it'll make sure to keep the uh, audio and video uh, synced up. Um, and then also I've turned on audio scrubbing. That's just so that when I move uh, this around like this, you'll be able to hear little sound bits and that just kind of helps to know where it is, but you don't really need to do that. I would definitely suggest uh, clicking on AV Sync though. And then one other thing, uh, just make sure that uh, right here on the color management, make sure that this uh, view transform is not set to filmic because if it's set to filmic, it'll change some of the color correction on your footage and you don't really want to do that. You want to manually do color correction. So just make sure it's set to standard and the look as none and that way it won't uh, mess up your footage at all. Um, and then I'm just gonna bring my face right over here, uh, just so that if we have to use some of these tools, uh, we can see them. So uh, yeah, add in your footage. I'm just gonna drag and drop it from the file browser. Another way you can do it is to press Shift A with your mouse over this timeline, and then you'll click on like uh, movie right here. So I'm just gonna go like this. And then uh, you wanna make sure that the resolution of your footage is the same in Blender. So click on here under your render settings. The the camera that I used, it's a 1080p camera, so 1920 by 1080 is um, my footage resolution. If your footage resolution is different, then you're going to need to change it. And then also just uh, make sure you know the frame rate of your camera. Uh, I know that my camera's frame rate is 59.94 frames per second, so basically 60 frames per second. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Uh, when I threw the footage into Blender, it already knew that, so uh, it might do it automatically, but if it doesn't, then uh, just make sure it's the same. Uh, one way to make sure that your frame rate is the same is when you add in your uh, footage, if the video and audio are the same length. So you can see here's the audio and here's the video. And uh, also, if you want to see the sound waves, you can do that by going, uh, click right here on View and then go down to waveform displaying and then turn waveforms on. So I have it set up on default so that when I'm doing video editing, it's always there. Uh, so yeah, you can turn that on if you want. Um, so yeah, the dark blue is your video and then the light blue is your audio. Now I don't want the audio to get offset from the video. I want them to stay the same together. So what I'm gonna do is 
uh, click on the video and then hold down shift and then click on the audio. And then I'm going to press control G and that will add them into a group. You can see it says meta strip. That's a group. And then if I press tab, I can go inside that group. And then, uh, here's the audio and video, but I can just tab back out of that. And then I can just edit this. And that way the video and audio won't get offset from each other. So now I'm just going to set the end frame, just drag it and pull it out and just pull it out as long as you need. And then, uh, I'm just going to press the space bar and play, or you can just hit play right here. And this is the one I like best, this one right here. So I will, uh, select this strip and then I'll press K and K will cut the strip. So now I've cut the strip. I'll just select this area of it and then I will delete it. And then also right here, you can see there's these handles, uh, you can click and drag, and then you can pull these handles around. Uh, so now I will find the starting of this and, uh, I start to come in right about here. So I will select this and then I'll actually move my mouse over to this side. And that way, when I press K to cut the strips, this one will automatically be selected. So then I'll uh, just make sure this one's selected and press X or delete and then press erase strips. And now I'll make sure this strip is selected and press G and that'll grab the strip and I'll pull it to the starting of the timeline. And then I will zoom in and I'll make sure I'll press G again and just move it to frame one. So you can see I'll just zoom in and move it to frame one. So now if I press the space bar, you can see, there we go. I shoot and then run out and then I'll just end it right here. So I'll just grab this handle and then pull it right here. And then I can just move the end frame down like this right there, and then just bring it up until the end frame is the same. Okay. So that's our footage right there. I'm going to save this file. So I will save by pressing control S. You can also go file and save, and I'm just going to save this file as tutorial, uh, on my hard drive. So then you can click save blender file. So now it's saved and then you can just press control S and that'll save it or just go file save while you're working on your project. Uh, so now we can add in the stock footage. So I'm going to be using two different stock footages. I'm going to be using the muzzle flash Magnum side one. And then I'm also going to be using, uh, the muzzle flash Magnum quarter one. So you can go and get those on productioncrate.com or just get any stock footage that you want to use. If you do want to use the same ones that I'm using, you can just type in like Magnum and then I can see these are the two ones that I was using. So you can just download those if you want to use the same ones that I was using. So I'm just going to click and drag my footage in here and then just drop it in. And you can see here it is. And there's like a smoke and stuff. So that looks super awesome. And I'm just going to change this blend value from cross to alpha over because all of these stock footage, uh, they have an alpha channel. So they have transparency. So that way you can add it on top of other footage. Uh, so that's, what's so great about this. Um, so now you can see it looks pretty cool. I'm just going to move my timeline to where I fire the first time. So I'll just find it and I can just, uh, use my arrow keys and move. And then you can see, I'm going to have it fire like right there. So then I'll click on this, uh, stock footage and just drag it over until I can see it like that. Okay. So now you can see, we need to place it right on top of the gun because right now it's just kind of like in the center of the scene. Uh, so I will make sure this stock footage is selected and I'll press shift a, or you can go to add. And I will go to, uh, effect strip and I'll go to transform and this will add like a transform. This will add like transform options to our stock footage. Um, and so again, you can see what it's done is it's removed the background. That's because on the transform, you have to go to blend, change it from replace to alpha over. And that way, uh, it'll use that alpha channel, that transparency. And so then you can see the footage behind it. So now we have all these cool settings. I'm going to click on uniform scale. That way it'll be scaled on the X and Y both at the same time. And then I will just scale it down. And then the position, the Y and the X position, and I can just very easily move it around. If you want to rotate it too, you can do that. 
and I'll just uh, make it however big I want. I think I'll scale it a little bit smaller. So there we go. And you can see there's like some little sparks and stuff. So that's looking really cool. Uh, so now we can go do the, the same thing to the other gunshot that I have. So I'll just go and find it. And it's right about here. So I will just uh, click and drag my other stock footage right here. And then I can just grab and move it down like this. And then you can uh, press shift A and add a transform. And then you can set the transform to alpha over and you don't have to worry about setting this one to alpha over if you're just going to add a transform anyways and then i'll click on uniform scale and i will just scale it down and kind of zoom in here so i'll use my scroll wheel zoom in and then i'll just uh, move it where i want so right about there and there we go so that's looking pretty awesome uh so another thing that makes it look really cool of course is adding in sound effects so sound effects are just super awesome they just really uh can sell that and it really make it feel like it's actually real uh, and so productioncrate.com does have uh sound effects so right here if you just click on sound effects you can see they have a bunch of sound effects i'm going to click here on the guns and then guns firing and you can see they have a bunch of stuff and so the one i'm going to be using is the loud gunshot uh where is that here it is so i'm going to be using this loud gunshot one so you can download that if you have a free account or a uh pro account too and so now i will just grab the sound effect and just drop it in right here and then here it is here's the sound effect then I'll go to the first one too, and then I will uh, click on this uh, sound effect and I'll press shift D and that'll duplicate it. And then I'll just move it right over here to the starting. And so there we go, that's pretty awesome. And then another thing that I think really makes uh, it look a lot cooler is if we add kind of a flash to the whole scene. So I'll press shift A and then I will go uh, to adjustment layer and I'll add an adjustment layer. Make sure nothing is selected. If something is selected, just make sure it's deselected. Uh, you can use a to select and deselect. So just press shift a and add an adjustment layer. And then I'll move this adjustment layer right here, uh, right on top of where the gunshot is. And then using this adjustment layer, we can add a bright flash on top of the video. So I will go uh, down here to modifiers with the adjustment layer selected. I'll click add strip modifier and I will add a brightness and contrast. And then uh, we can animate this brightness value. So I will uh, use uh, my arrow keys and just move it one frame be back, one frame behind where the muzzle flash actually happens. And on this bright value, I'm going to press I when I have my mouse selected over it. And that will add a keyframe. So we're going to do a sign, kind of a little bit of animating. And then I'll move one. Uh, I'm going to move one frame over. And then I'm going to turn this up to probably around maybe 10, maybe 15, somewhere around there. And then I will press I again to add a new keyframe. And then I will just go forward a few frames, maybe 5, 10 frames. And then I will click on this value, change it back to zero, and then I'll press I again to add another keyframe. So you can see it starts at zero, then it goes up to our value, I, mine's at about 14, and then it goes back down. And that's just really cool, it just adds a big flash. I think that 14 might be too high, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, move the timeline over to that keyframe again, right where the muzzle flash starts. And then I'll just uh, change this to maybe 10, and then I'll press I again. And if you press I uh, over the uh, keyframe that's already there, it'll overwrite the keyframe. So now it's just set to 10. And then this adjustment layer, we can just duplicate it and put it on the first one. So I'll just press Shift D to duplicate and I'll move it over and I'll just drag it until it, the muzzle flash, uh, the brightness starts right there when the muzzle flash comes. So there we go. That's basically it. Uh, you can add in uh, music if you want. Uh, I used music from productioncrate.com. And so uh, let's set up a final render. So I'm just gonna go over here to the render settings. So right here on the output, you can set where you want the video to be rendered to. I already have it set to my desktop, but you can just click on this folder and set it to wherever you want. And then I will just type here at the end, uh, final render. 
Okay, and then you can just scroll down here and on the file format, we don't want PNG because that's pictures. We wanna set it to FFmpeg video. And then if you keep scrolling down, uh, you can see I've already set up some stuff on default, but you can just open up the encoding. I like to use uh, MPEG-4 for the container, and then on video, I use uh, H.264, and then uh, these should be already set to medium quality and good. And then if you scroll down to the audio, you need to tell it to use some audio. So I use AAC. You could also use MP3, or I think these other ones work as well. I usually use ACC or MP3. So now we have all those settings uh, set up. And so I'm just gonna go File, Save, and you can just play through it one more time to just make sure it's all good. And you can see there's the starting and then there's the ending. And we have the start at one frame one and then the end at frame 248. Okay, so just make sure you have your file saved and then you can go to render and render animation or control F12. And you can see here's the final result, and I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, so as you can see, it's super easy to create stock footage using ProductionCrate.com. And ProductionCrate.com also has some really cool stuff like explosions and things. And uh, you can pretty much use the same method for a lot of different VFX. So I hope this tutorial was helpful, and I'll see you in a future tutorial.